Hello everyone, back to today's first video, I'm going to do the third and final uh, seasonal all around for spring of 2018 for today's uh, third video. Um, so for the final time, we're going to have a look at all the long range models. I've got 13 long range models to uh, look at. We haven't got the Apex, we ran out of time uh, for that, but we have got all the other um, long range season models for you to uh, have a look at. And of course, this is all in anticipation of tomorrow. When we're going to release the uh, gasweathers.com spring 2018 forecast. So that will be the first video that you see uh, tomorrow. Um, and this in anticipation of that. Uh, just to say that later on today, we're going to have the weekend forecast. It's going to be a really, really, really interesting week uh, ahead. I think it isn't going to be a weekend forecast that you are going to forget for quite a long time. Um, we could be really going to town on the wintriness of the weather in the week ahead forecast. So I suggest come back uh, later on this afternoon and have a look at that. And then this evening, I suspect there will be some sort of update. Maybe our first snow watch, who knows? But I think there'll be an update this evening as well. And of course, it's going to be quite a long video this season will round up for the spring. So uh, this will be placed on the spring uh, updates forecast page later on today. And there'll be a written uh, summary that goes with it as well. So um, come back, have a read of that later on if you would like to do that. Right, loads and loads and loads and loads going on uh, at the moment. So I think we better crack on with our third and final uh, season will round up for the spring of 2018. We're going to start off with the uh, Russian model. So this is temperature probability from uh, the Russian model for the spring. All models in this update are covering the full spring period. Now, there's no messing around with um, sort of uh, uh, periods that are not covering the full spring. For example, last month, you remember, we uh, had a few uh, models that were for February to April. There's none of that. This is all completely covering the spring, every model that you see in this video. So, um, Russian model, temperature probability. I think, more or less, we are coming out with a probability of a colder than average spring here in the northwestern part of uh, Europe and really quite a cold-looking signal for the Atlantic. The UK is average to colder than uh, average for this spring in terms of the temperature probability. In terms of a precipitation probability, we're coming out uh, below normal. So um, uh, average to cold and average, and average to a little bit drier than average is a signal for this spring uh, fr uh, from the Russian model to start us off. I've got the Japanese model next. Now, usually I, um, I'm able to isolate this out and have a look at uh, this model individually. Um, on a month-by-month -month basis, because we don't have time to fit everything in, actually, to uh, be season one around. So, unfortunately, this month, I've not been able to do it. And I might do it for you uh, in uh, one of the um, day, one of the updates in the coming week. I've not been able to do it so far because we have had such uh, a busy time uh, with all of this cold weather that's on the way. Uh, and unleashing the bees from the east. We've been focusing on it, doing video after video after video on that, and so I've not had a I've not had time, just ha haven't had time to um, isolate out the JMA this month. So very very sorry about that. These are the three monthly anomalies. So this is covering the full spring, starting off with the 500 millibar height anomaly for this spring. Uh, we're placing an area of above average heights to our southwest. They're near a normal pressure uh, elsewhere. It doesn't really tell you a great deal. In terms of the temperature anomaly from the JMA model for the spring, it's coming out average to uh, milder than average. And in terms of the precipitation anomaly, it's coming out uh, above average. I can tell you that overall it's quite dry in the early spring. I mean, it goes very wet, uh, interestingly, in May. The um, mean wind direction from the JMA model for this spring looks very westerly. The black arrows are hard to make out, but they're generally coming from a westerly direction so an unsettled but fairly mild spring from the jma but that does hide but the fact that there it is changing there are changes on a month by month basis i haven't got time fortunately to show you those uh charts for this update if it hadn't been for the bees from the east i would have been able to bring you that in a video 
uh, at some point through uh, the month. But unfortunately, there's been so much else going on this month, I, I just haven't had the time to bring you that update. So apologies about that. Right, have a look at the uh, Brazilian model next. So these are 500 mm heights for the uh, spring from Brazil. This one always does things a little bit different. So blue is extrapolated to high pressure and uh, a yellow, orange and red extrapolates to low pressure on any other height dominant, it's the other way round. Uh, so we've got an area of above average heights to our southwest with the Brazilian model. It looks like, although it doesn't go down to yellow, orange or red, it looks like there's a trough to our east northeast, which I assume we're doing something like that for flowing with the jet stream. It looks like a fairly unsettled and probably quite coolish uh, spring as well from the Brazilian model. Temperature anomalies are coming out average to maybe slightly on the mild of an average side, but actually that's a fairly coolish looking uh, seasonal temperature anomaly from this model. Normally it's a lot warmer. Uh, than that. So uh, close to average temperatures uh, and fairly unsettled. Um, that's the precipitation anomaly coming out uh, close to average um, there. So not a big deviation at all, but I suspect it's a little bit on the cooler and more unsettled side, uh, if anything. Uh, these are our CanSIMPS uh, model next. So uh, this is mean. So, sorry, if I get a bit mixed up, I'm just going to explain. So I get a little bit mixed up, I get a little bit tongue-tied, uh, go off on a bit of a tangent or sort of lose my train of thought a little bit. It's because it has been an extraordinarily long week trying to pin down the beast from the east and getting all of the videos and the updates together about the easterly and the cold weather. Um, and uh, so that's just it. You're just, just going to have to bear with me. It's been a very, very long week indeed and uh, i'm doing this on thursday night actually and there's still a lot more uh to go so mean sea level pressure anomaly for the spring uh of 2018 from can sips in canada um looks like it's uh, rather unsettled to our north and then above average heights to our south southwest and bring the uh, flow through from the atlantic rather like that nothing particularly exciting uh happen temperature anomalies from uh can sips are coming out again close to average which for this model that is a little bit cooler than what we often see with this model although it isn't going for a particularly cold spring by any means precipitation anomalies Overall, for the south, anyway, it's coming out a bit drier than average. It's wetter than average up to the northwest. It's drier than average down to the southwest. So near normal precipitation anomalies, I think you would say about that. Uh, now, I've got a bit of news on um, the NASA model. You'll know that for a couple of the uh, long-range updates we've done, we've been without um, the NASA model, the experimental NASA model. That's because they have changed uh, I think they've upgraded the model and kind of changed the charts around quite a lot. So now I can't access, at the moment, anyway, it may come on stream uh, hopefully uh, soon, but at the moment I can't access seasonal anomalies. I can only access monthly anomalies and uh, only temperature and precipitation, no heights or pressure included. So uh, this is the temperature anomaly for March um, from NASA, and it's coming out with a rather milder than average uh, month. This is the um, temperature anomaly for April. Again, coming out more than average and more so than March, interestingly. So April looks like a warmer month compared to March. Um, and May comes out also with uh, average to slightly above average temperature. It looks like we lose the warmth that we have in April quite a lot. Um, and we come out uh, closer to average, but still above average generally um, for uh, May as well. So I suppose if you just put that into a free monthly anomaly, you would definitely say that it's a milder than average uh, season, milder than average spring being predicted. Uh, precipitation. Now, these have gone very pale and they're very difficult to make out. I'm not actually all that sure we'll be including this in uh, this model in many more updates because the charts have become very difficult um, to work out. Uh, so, for precipitation for March, um, the anomaly 
is close to, or maybe ever so slightly above average, but I mean, um, that's above average on the scale there, that's below average on the scale there, I think you really have to squint close up a screen to see, um, what that is actually doing, it looks like it's average to slightly above average with precipitation in March, um, April also looking very faint, uh, hardly anything, uh, happening there, so again, I think it's close to average, really, uh, in April, and uh, May also looking uh, close to average, I've looked at the anomalies of the summer, actually, as well, and they don't really uh, show anything any more dramatic, um, so I'm not entirely sure we'll be using NASA, the experimental NASA model, again, unless they sort of change things, and uh, make it a bit clearer, um, I'm not sure how much use this model is going to be. So if you don't see NASA, the experimental uh, seas model from NASA showing up in the summer updates, uh, which will be starting from next month. Uh, if you don't see it, then that's the reason why I've taken it out, because I'm not very impressed with um, what they've done. Right, we'll have a look at see uh, that is much clearer to um, say what's going on. This is the, uh, from our good friend Patal Peng, these are the analogues from uh, Patal Peng. Um, so uh, this is taking the sea surface temperature anomalies across the world in any given month, and in this example it's from the sea surface temperature anomalies in uh, January uh, last month. Having taken those sea surface temp temperature anomalies and then comparing them to uh, past uh, years that had similar sea surface temperature anomalies, and then you create an analogs based forecast going forward. And this has been a strong signal from Patel Peng for the spring of 2018 for all of Patel's uh, updates. So you have an area of above average heights over and to the east of the UK, with below average heights out in the Atlantic, and so the flow of the jet stream would be going rather like that. It looks like it should be a very pleasant uh, spring deep. The temperature anomaly is coming out milder than average for uh, from Patel Peng's uh, analogs and precipitation anomalies are generally average to drier uh, than average, particularly so for northern parts of the country. So a very pleasant spring D being predicted by uh, Patel Peng and that has been the case um, throughout many of Patel's uh, updates for this uh, season. Patel Pen works with un within the umbrella of um, NOAA uh, and CPC and NCEP, uh, so that's why it's included in this section of, that's why he is included in this section of the video. Right, CFSV2, uh, these are 700 bit of our heights for the spring of 2018, a trough of below average heights over and a little bit to the south of the UK, above average heights to the north, got a little bit of a blocking signal there, so it looks like the jet stream would be on something of a subly track and you could be starting to entrench some colder air uh, into that trough as well perhaps. Um, temperature anomalies, look at this, for the spring of 2018. Overall close to average in most of Europe, but there's a section in the northern part of Europe, and it does just about extend into the UK, that is actually coming out with a colder than average season for this spring. And that is very, 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 and I'll add in another very, that's another very unusual spring uh, signal, unusual seasonal signal from the CFS model. It very rarely goes for colder than average seasons in uh, Europe, but that's what it's seen at the moment. Northern parts of Europe coming out for colder than average season. For the UK, the spring is average to possibly hinting at being a bit on the colder than average side. Temperature anomalies are looking like that. So actually that's gone through to precipitation. So um, let's have a look at the temperature. So we've done the temperature. I tell you, it's been a really long day. I'm, I'm just ready to uh, collapse in a heap on the floor uh, at any moment. Um, so we've gone through to the precipitation anomaly from the CFS uh, V2. That's right. And uh, we've got a signal for it to be rather wetter than average across southern Europe. Up and rather drier than average across um, northern parts of uh, Europe, close to average with precipitation. But I think overall it is going for quite a coldish uh, season. 
Ah, oh, now this is interesting. This is um, Poe Armour. This is a long-range uh, exclusive model from uh, Australia. These charts are not publicly accessible, so we've had to do an interpretation uh, of the uh, long-range Poe Armour model. I got my good friend James Aquil to do an interpretation of the charts that uh, we've seen from this long-range model uh, from Australia. So this is mean sea level pressure anomalies for the spring. Uh, it shows an unsettled signal with below average pressure over and to the north of the UK. Very little high pressure to be seen. And we'd be bringing the jet stream through uh, rather like that. The uh, temperature anomaly is uh, coming out. Remember, it's our interpretation of um, the Poama model. Temperature anomalies are coming out very close to average. So, again, perhaps a little bit on the cooler side than what we often see with these seasonal models. And um, the strongest signal is perhaps for it to be quite wet, uh, above average precipitation being signaled there for uh, the UK and for Ireland for this spring too. This is the Copernicus website, and they're publishing uh, the long-range seasonal models with from uh, the ECMWF and from Metro France uh, now. So those models were highly exclusive access models, similar to Pearl Armour. You could only... I would only have been able to include them in the videos through interpretations, but now we can show you the raw model output. Start, uh, output. Start with the ECMWF. This is the um, mean sea level pressure anomaly for the spring. EC ECM uh, sees one is placing below average heights to our east and northeast. A um, little bit of a blocking signal over there as well. So it looks like we might be on the cold side of a jet stream there for the spring uh, with the EC seasonal model. Temperature anomalies are looking uh, like that. So uh, coming out um, average to maybe hinting at being a bit on the colder than average side for the UK. Another model that is looking rather uh, cooler, even if it's not desperately cold. Precipitation anomalies are coming out uh, from the ECM to UFC, the model probably close to average, maybe hinting at being ever so slightly on the above average side, but I think we're stretching things a bit there. So it's close to average for rainfall from the ECM seasonal model, but the uh, temperature is average to possibly be hinting at being a bit cooler than average. A trough generally centered anomalously to our northeast. Metro France sees the model looks like that. Uh, again, this is mean sea level pressure anomalies with below average pressure to our north and presumably bringing the jet stream through uh, from the Atlantic like that. Looks like it would be an unsettled signal. Now, the temperature anomaly is nearer, um, is more sort of above average with Metro France. So it isn't really seeing that colder uh, potential that we have from the ECM uh, WF, generally average to a bit to above average for the um, temperature precipitation from Metro France. I think, again, it's close to average, maybe, if anything, hinting at being a bit, a little bit above average, but again, I think it might be stretching things a bit uh, with that one. Uh, Beijing Climate Centre, we're nearing the end now, I'll be able to go and collapse in a moment. So, uh, the Beijing Climate Centre, 500 millimetre height anomaly, further spring of um, 2018 looks like that. This is uh, 200 millimetre heights, I should say. Above average heights, generally over and to the west, northwest of the UK, which you would think probably places us on the cool side of the jet stream. The uh, temperature anomaly is average, very close to average, maybe, if anything, a little bit more of an average, but I think generally it's not a big anomaly. So it's another model that's showing close to average temperatures. Many of these models are doing that, and this is cooler compared to what most of these seasonal models uh, show. So I'll talk about that at the end of the video. And then we've got the precipitation anomaly, which is coming out, bit of a mixed bag, um, but if anything, probably a little bit on the drier than average side. Jams Tech penultimately, and uh, there's been a consistent signal from Jams Tech through um, these updates of the spring. So it's coming out colder than average for the UK, and much of Western Europe. It's also coming out interestingly cold and average for the spring across much of northern, central, and eastern America. 
Now, that's interesting because for Jams Tech, what normally happens with this model is that it starts off uh, in the first update, which is furthest away from the season, of course. It'll start off cold, and then it'll tend to moderate as you go along. So by the time you get through to the third and final season one round, it's usually sh uh, showing milder than average, the same as all other models. But um, this season, it's different throughout all three updates, including this final one, it's showing a colder than average spring. And for uh, precipitation as well, that's coming out average to possibly hinting at being a little bit above average. And then finally, we've got UK Met Office Glow C5. This is the mean sea level pressure anomaly for the spring. This has changed quite a lot on earlier updates. It now has an area of above average heights centred around Greenland and Iceland with below average heights through the central Atlantic underneath it and presumably bringing in quite a southerly tracking uh, jet stream as well. So it looks unsettled, yes, but it also looks potentially quite a bit colder. Temperature anomalies, though, are still coming out above average, uh, although it's not as big a deviation as we have had um, from glossing uh, in earlier updates. But nevertheless, it is still um, a little bit above average with the temperature anomaly. And the precipitation anomaly shows it's above average with precipitation as well. Uh, so, again, coming out above average. That's been a consistent signal throughout these um, seasonal model roundups. Notice to our northwest, generally coming out drier than average. That's where we've got the high pressure. So, you can see where the position of the jet stream is going to be doing something like that and tracking over or maybe even a little bit to the south of the UK. And that rounds it all off. So what can we say about all of this? Well, I think we can say that in terms of the expected pressure patterns, there is a lot of deviation going on within these models. But overall, I think we're still probably favouring quite an unsettled spring, uh, really. So quite unsettled uh, is the broad thing of the um, models. I think what's happened though is that they have shifted cooler. Now not necessarily cold, the only model actually that is uh, going for a colder than average uh, spring as it has been from beginning to end is Jamstech. All of the other models are sort of close to average. The Russian model is close to being cold and average as well I think. But all of the other models generally coming out average to a little bit above average. But that's a correction down uh, towards the cooler side of things. Because um, as I said, these are climate models. They're long-range seasonal climate models, and they do very often favour warmer than average temperature anomalies, significantly so most of the time. So to be seeing most of these models going for average temperatures is actually quite interesting, and it means we may be in blind for quite a coldish season, actually. If these sort of um, a little bit biased... Long range season models, bias except for Jams Tech, which is always a bit colder. But if these um, bias towards the mild side of things, season models are going for an average uh, season, then we may actually have to start thinking about a colder than average season, potentially. Okay, and that's your third and final seasonal model roundup for the spring of 2018. This uh, video will be placed on the spring updates and forecast page later on today with a written summary just going over everything that we've discussed tomorrow. We're going to bring it all together. We're going to bring together the analogues with these long-range models. We're going to see if we can come up with a uh, forecast of a spring of 2018 that'll be your first video um tomorrow uh and also tomorrow we'll have the uh, gas weather sunday roundup of course as always on a sunday uh and also got a live chat coming up with uh quantum we'll be discussing the cold and snow uh potential in the days ahead so that'll be starting around five o'clock it'll be interactive we'll take all of your um questions and uh all of that kind of thing so that'll be um a little bit special i think tomorrow evening from around five o'clock at gas weather 
And of course, weekend forecast is coming up later on today, which is going to be a very, very interesting forecast. I'll say no more than that. At nearly 25 minutes, it's time for me to round it all off and go and fall down into uh, a big uh, heap. Um, so that's all for now. And thanks for watching.